Hey guys, Ipangu here on day two of Shine, joined by Vish, who has just gotten off a red eye from California. <laughs> uh, Vish, how you feeling? I was definitely tired. Um, I got in at 8 a.m. and then I had to play my pools at 10 a.m., which is fun. And uh, I'm in top 96 though. I lost to Face Roll. He kind of demolished me. He tech chased me to hell. And uh, I think he has my soul. It kind of sucks. <laughs> Yeah, he's probably grabbing that soul quite tightly right now. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, that's that's really good to hear. I'm glad to hear that you made it to top 96 because I think people sometimes still sleep on you as a player, think of you more as a commentator, despite you having been around for so long. Uh, why do you think that is? I think uh, I was more known as a player before I did commentary, and then um, that kind of just washed away because the commentary, I got way more recognition for it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. It's kind of unfortunate. But I'll get a lot of money matches as a result of that because people will sleep on me and be like, oh, he's the commentator. I bet he's not that good. <laughs> nah, I take, that, take that money. <laughs> get that sh money. <laughs> yeah. Are you planning on money match matching Korean DJ? I know he's here and he has like a list of 32 people he wants to money match that he challenged. And then he said he'll accept money matches from anyone else. I would definitely be down to money match Korean DJ. Actually, one of my first memories in Smash. Should I wait for this? Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so you were asking about Korean DJ? Yeah. So KDJ, would I money match him? The first memory I had of Korean DJ was at a Boston local. It was the first time I met Matt.Zeb. And he introduced me to KDJ and I was like, oh my god, this is like my first tournament, first out of state tournament. I was like, oh dude, Korean DJ. This is like <laughs> a peak of KDJ. And then so they were both like whispering to each other and then they were like, we're gonna give you the worst feeling you've ever had in Melee or like the worst experience you've ever had in Melee. It's gonna gonna hurt your soul and I was like oh okay I wonder if I want to do this I was like picturing KDJ like throwing my controller on the ground I was like I don't know what's coming <laughs> I had no idea what was coming and then so he like sits down he plays me and then he picks Ganondorf and back then I used to play Fox oh. so I played Fox we went to FD and I was like okay I don't know what's coming and he literally beat me with just down airs with Ganondorf and that was how they initiate people or whatever they do it's like a hazing ritual I guess back then so I would be down to money match KDJ and uh, <laughs> have the run back of that. <laughs> That's literally the only time I played KDJ too. He's just like down aired me over and over again. You have the green fox jacket on right now, yes. which I'm I'm impressed by because it, it's quite warm here right it's now. Really warm. I am uh, taking one for the team for this interview. <laughs> I can't just be wearing my V-neck when my boys got this filthy ass <laughs> shirt on. But yeah, this nice sea breeze is helping though. Yeah. Well, I mean, you also got to look good for. I mean. Like we just said, you are more known for commentary, but uh, you've, you've really, I think, come up in commentary pretty quickly, too. You've definitely always been good, but people are really recognizing you. They're talking about Vish and Webs. Vish and Webs are so good at commentary. <laughs> How do you feel about that, becoming one of those people to, to break, break into the, the quote-unquote new guard of commentary? New guard of commentary? Dang, dang, okay. Uh, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, I think Webs and I kind of came up around the same time, so we kind of have that same uh, trajectory you're talking about where we kind of came up pretty fast. I think timing had a lot to do with it, other than um, skill as well. It was like right at the cusp of when Melee was starting to get really, really much bigger. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when I got more into commentary, kind of as a result of not being able to play as much because of hand stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh man, I should still share my knowledge and whatnot. And it started in Washington out of like necessity. Like most commentators, it kind of started out of necessity. It's like, oh, okay, uh, I would get like third back then, third or fourth back then a lot, uh, and then I would just commentate uh, Silent Wolf and Bladewise Grand Finals all the time. Mm -hmm. And then, so that allowed me to just like get good at commentary or get, get my chops in commentary. And then from there, got my first national was like SmashCon two years ago. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just kept going, dude. Two, two, three years ago, something like that. I don't even remember. It wasn't last year. Last year was the first SmashCon. Last year was the first SmashCon? Okay, so it had to be two years ago. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, do you think, you know, you have acting experience, having worked professionally as an actor a little bit, and, uh, you know, people see you in those commercials, they always tag you on Facebook when they see you. Do you think that's, do you think that's helped with, uh, with commentary? Well, I think it makes me a little bit comfortable with the camera. I don't mind it as much, mm -hmm. but I don't know if it translated very well. I think the thing that actually helped a lot with commentary was taking improv. Yeah. And improv is so good for commentary because it's just like oh you can say whatever you want yeah. mistakes don't really matter um you try to make a joke and it's not that really a big a deal you know mm -hmm. so i think that is actually low-key the best way to get a get better at commentary is doing improv i think tafo's done it yeah. uh jackzilla has done it 
I can't think of anyone else that's done it, but yeah. I've done it, but I'm not a very good commentator. You're a pretty good <laughs> no, commentator. No, no, no. Catch us at Genesis 3. Open, oh, yeah. Opening true, day. True. Opening day. <laughs> I couldn't tell who was playing. As <laughs> Santiago, face roll. <laughs> oh, man. Um, well, I, I just talked about how you might be part of the new guard of commentary, but you are actually a, quite an old school player. There's a, a really great picture of you and Toph with PC Chris floating around the yeah, internet. Yeah, thank, <laughs> thank you, thank you, hugs for that for sharing it and then just demoralizing us, destroying us. I think I think Frovish was actually very filthy. Afrovish, I got to bring that back. It was hard to maintain, but it was super fun. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think. Um, that was also one of the earlier tournaments we had. Like me and a bunch of University of Washington students back then, used uh, went all together to Hawaii, and then stayed at Tof's mom's house. Yeah. Shout out to Tof's mom and Tof. <laughs> and uh, so we got to hang out. And PC Chris just decided to come and kick it in Hawaii because he would win the tournament for free, pay for his yeah. flight there, and it's just a dope trip to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you think that that old school knowledge helps you with commentary and as a player? Because honestly, you've made some pretty big upsets that people sleep on sometimes. Oh yeah, tell them, tell them about my, tell them Ooh. about my upsets. Mac D, Vish versus Mac D, it was ugly. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little funny. Um, yeah, I think it helps a lot because there's, the, the new meta now definitely is way better than it was back then. But there's certain tricks that people just don't uh, recognize or they don't, I feel like some of my old school shenanigans still work on the, the players nowadays for whatever reason. I can't put my finger on it, but for whatever reason, it just feels like, oh, I can... Just being able to play for that long, I recognize a lot of situations and still throw out stuff that maybe people aren't ready for. Mm -hmm. And I think in commentary, it helps a lot just because I have that depth of knowledge from so many years. So yeah, definitely it helps. Well, You're okay, so tell me about... about Ta speaking of old school tricks, I think also your region is pretty slept on. Uh, it, yeah. It's 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 definitely not the strongest region, but it has a long history to it that people don't know in terms of Pacific Northwest in general because you have players like Scion who were really good Falcos way back when, and then you have Auto and Bladewise and all that sort of stuff. Right. So do you think that maybe some of your knowledge also comes from a region that has developed its own scene and, and that people sleep on? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, I think like Fox Ditto's got changed quite a bit because of Eggs and Silent Wolf. If you go back and watch those videos, they played in such a unique way. And uh, Eggs was one of the first people to do like Shine Turnaround back air. Yeah. You know, so there's like DJ Combo versus Eggs is still one of my favorite matches. I think it's 1.4. Really solid just comboing on FD, um, Fox versus Marth. But I, th I think you're right. It, it is a lot of unique kind of play styles back then. A lot of aggression, mm -hmm. which I think has helped me become a more aggressive player. And I'm really comfortable in like close quarter situations most of the time. Um, yeah, I think we are slept on quite a bit, especially lately, because, you know, Silent Wolf's not playing as much, so it's kind of Bladewise taking the helm, and uh, there's a couple other up-and-comers like Rustin, Vito. Mm -hmm. Iceman has been there for a while. Mm -hmm. He is ranked third right now. So I think, yeah, we are slept on a bit as a region. Unfortunately, British Columbia kind of stopped playing as much, so Scion, uh, Noob King, Diakonos. Diakonos was such a good Martha. I don't know if you remember Diakonos. But yeah, they, they shaped a lot of the meta back then, but kind of just fell off or stopped playing and whatnot. You said you said unique play styles back then. Do you think that as we move forward towards a theoretical perfect melee, that unique play styles start to die out or at least start to converge towards one thing? Yeah, I think, I think that's absolutely the case. That's absolutely the case. I think uh, there's less, especially among the top, top players, there's less style choices because there's just something that's efficient all the time. You know, even among the Falcons, you'll see a lot more tech chasing. Even even Johnny, I feel like, is doing more bread and butter stuff, and I feel like he would be just out there running and destroying things. And same with none. So I, I agree with you that it's not s being solved. I can't think of a different way to phrase it, but it's just kind of going to this trajectory where, like, there is a play style that's safer and effective and better in the grand scheme of things. And if you want to win or just, like, break into that, like, top 40, top 50, you have to kind of cater to that play style. There's very few really, like, crazy unique players nowadays, you know? Just because the combo game is so strong, if you don't do the right combo, they're going to do it to you. So even, like, today in Falcon Dittos, I would try doing my old school stuff with the players I played before in, in my round one and round two pools. So they, they, I would do, like, oh, okay, like, a lot of heavy tech chases and, like, heavy reads. And then they would just start tech chasing me with, like, up throw and down throw. And I was like, oh, man, if I don't do this back to them, I'm going to be in a world of pain. Yeah. And then you see that a lot with, like, players like Face Roll and Spark. And they just, they're just, like, really made the combo game so efficient that 
you have to be efficient as well or you're just going to lose. Well, thanks so much for talking to us, Vish. I really appreciate it. I'll let you maybe go get a nap uh, since you've been awake for quite a while. Uh, but after this plane passes... <laughs> I just wanted you to give us, uh, I mentioned earlier that you're an actor, and there's one clip in particular where you're very flabbergasted, you don't know what's going on. Uh, I'd like you to, to give us your best, like, what is even going on right now right. From, from that video, which I will post a link to as well. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and then all my data is gone. What is happening? What is going on? <laughs> That's, that's, why, that's why they pay me the big bucks, dude. That's why they pay me the big bucks. All right, any shout-outs, last words you want to do before we end? Uh, shout-outs to Shine, honestly. This this is one of the better-run tournaments for sure of the year, and uh, they had us for top eight last year and top eight for this year. Mm -hmm. So definitely shout-outs to Shine. Shout-outs to you for being an excellent interviewer. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Shout-outs to Boston. I'm going to go get a lobster roll. Ooh. Lobster mm -hmm. from Boston. <laughs> That's why they pay him the big bucks, folks. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for watching, you guys. Here from Shine 2017, I'm Ipengu with Vish. For more content this weekend, check out this YouTube channel and be sure to stay tuned. Thanks, guys.